good afternoon and welcome to the ESE studio. Uh, I have a privilege to introduce Professor Alan Fraser, who is our today's cardio star. Uh, he was the president of European Association of Echocardiography and he's one of the most prominent echocardiographers of all time. Professor Fraser, welcome and thank, thank you. you for accepting our invitation to be interviewed by EAE Club 35. Thank you very much. If you don't mind, I would start with your background. Uh, even though you spend most of your working life in Cardiff, uh, Wales, you were actually born in Scotland. Where did you grow up and uh, what did you want to be when you were a child or during high school? That's right, I was born in Aberdeen in the northeast of Scotland and then also studied at school in Edinburgh. So I come from the east of Scotland and the family background is from the highlands of Scotland. Um, I also come from a very medical family. Uh, my father and my grandfather were both doctors, for example, and I wanted to study medicine from a very young age. Uh, so I don't remember wanting to do anything else at school, which is what you ask. Uh, but how come that you, that you chose uh, echocardiography? And did you have uh, some particular mentor in, uh, at the beginning of your career? And do you think that it's important for all of us to have some kind of scientific father or, or mother in, in the early career? I was lucky at university studying in Edinburgh uh, in a re very reputed cardiology department with senior colleagues such as Desmond Julian and Michael Oliver who are very well known in European cardiology as my teachers at the time together with a variety of other colleagues. And so I decided as a medical student that I wanted to be a cardiologist um, because it seemed to me logical. Heart disease is very common. It's a severe problem. It's life-threatening. It's also something we can do a lot about. So it seemed to me it was a sensible specialty to choose because one can make a difference. Plus, it's a very nice match between clinical skills with diagnosis, the humanity side of medicine, talking to patients about serious illness, helping them with making decisions, and the chance within medicine to both be a physician and in some respects a surgeon with many technical skills. So I wanted to do medicine early, I wanted to do cardiology early, and then a lot of what happens after that happens with chance. But I was given the opportunity to go and work as a research fellow in the Thorax Centre in Rotterdam, which of course was a preeminent European centre for the development of ultrasound. It's where cross-sectional imaging started within Europe and working there with Jos Rulant and George Sutherland was a very important part of my career because I got involved in European medicine and it opened a lot of doors and a lot of uh, horizons expanded by interacting with people around the European medical community. Uh, great, but uh, what were your objectives and dreams when you started? To be a good clinician or to do research or both? I started my career wanting to be a clinical physician, make a difference to individual patients. And that's still something that gives me great pleasure. In fact, probably the most rewarding part of what any of us can do. Getting involved with diagnostic research was chance, with the opportunity, as I said, to go and work in a research center and get to know um, colleagues in engineering as well as in clinical science. I think that's very important for our subspecialty, having the opportunity to understand the basics of what our machines do and to question that and to learn from colleagues in physics. Did you ever dream of having such a good career as you have now? Uh, I don't think I had any special goals other than to work hard, use the opportunities that came my way. I think that's one thing I can say for the, the uh, questions that you're asking me, is that most careers, I think, get planned in retrospect. You can't tell what opportunities you're going to have. You may have a goal that you want to set yourself, but whether or not you can achieve that is not always your own responsibility. It also depends on chance. And most careers look organized because people have made the most of the opportunities that they had along the way. And that's what I would encourage younger colleagues to do. Uh, these days, our association is changing its name from the European Association of Echocardiography into European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging. Uh, what is your vision of future of echocardiography and cardiovascular imaging? Uh, is it enough to be an echocardiographer? Uh, maybe we will all be some kind of imaging specialist. I'm a very strong advocate of multimodality imaging. And indeed, when I was president of the European Association of Echocardiography, we wrote a paper on the future of cardiac imaging, which I think set out many of the principles that we're still trying to work through. 
um, I think it makes no sense to argue for one special technique against another. It must be from a clinical perspective what makes the most difference. And that's where I think our specialty has a long way to develop. We want things to be simple when um, actually what we need to do be is much more sophisticated in how we use numbers. We need to integrate clinical decision tools into the way we use diagnostic imaging. And we need to promote research on very large numbers, population samples, to get very good normal values. And also in future, I think, to develop software tools which will allow us to make much more precise quantitative deductions, but in an automated way, so that we don't use simple single cut points which don't work well. We also need to continue to work very strongly with industry because there is a whole issue of regulation of diagnostic imaging, which we've only just started to look at, that we now understand that the more sophisticated our machines become, the less likely it is that they give the same answer as another machine because of the different ways that companies analyze and process the raw data. And we need to look very much more at the comparability of imaging across multiple modalities. My final question, what is the best advice, if there is one, you can give to someone who is just starting with echocardiography? I was very fortunate um, when I was first the secretary of the working group on echocardiography and we started the European Echo Conferences, EuroEcho, to get to know Inga Edler, the father of echocardiography, before he died. And he was a very pleasant but extremely modest man who said that you could never predict where things were going. Uh, he didn't want to answer the same question I asked him because we can't predict what technological developments are going to come. But what he did is what I would still advise people to do, and that is to start from basic principles, to think and to question everything, and to work very closely with engineers, try and understand what our machines do, and try and use the new tools of statistical analysis um, and clinical decision support to integrate it into the way that we use our everyday clinical diagnostic imaging. Thank you so much for, for interviewing. I think this was welcome. the very perfect closing remark. Thank you.